Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. Super excited to hop over to my iPad and just really dive in and, and get into today's video. So lately I have been exploring OneNote as far as note taking and digital planning and while it's not my favorite way to take notes or digital plan, it is a way that I want to dive a little bit further into on this channel and hopefully show you how I go about digital planning or taking notes in OneNote and maybe offer a few freebies or two for you. If you use OneNote, I know that OneNote is well loved and came long before GoodNotes and the other note taking apps. So it's usually a fan favorite. It's really great if you have devices that aren't all in one ecosystem, like aren't all Apple or aren't all Windows. So while I do have all Apple products, I have used OneNote before. I've used OneNote before on my Windows computer and I also had to use OneNote for one of my classes. So I'm pretty familiar with OneNote and I actually created a digital planner to use specifically within OneNote. So I'm gonna dive into that planner a little bit today and also tell you at the end of this video how you can get that planner for yourself. So I have my OneNote app here, just gonna open that up. All right, so now I have my OneNote app open and I have multiple Microsoft accounts. So I am logged into my personal account and you wanna make sure that to gain access to this file, you wanna make sure that you are using a personal OneDrive account and not a business account. So this is kind of what the planner looks like. Very similar to my other videos where I show how to use digital planners in apps like GoodNotes and other PDF note-taking apps. You can create links within a OneNote planner. And what's great about OneNote is that you can actually go in and edit those links, whereas you can't in GoodNotes and other apps. However, I found it easiest to not actually create links within this digital planner. I found that it's really easy to accidentally bump and move them around within OneNote. And I just found it easier to navigate through the tabs here. So in this planner, I have a yearly overview page where you can kind of write down your key dates and anything that you have going on for the year. So January through December. And I have that over here in this tab. And then in the January tab, I have the January monthly as well as all the weeks and all the daily pages as well. And I have that for each month. A few of the tabs may have gotten a little bit out of order whenever I imported it. So let's just hop over into February, for example. What I like about OneNote is that they have kind of almost this infinite zoom and scroll, not necessarily, but there's a lot of space and you can basically do all the same functions as you would in GoodNotes. You can add pictures, you can write, you can add text, and you can actually create your own layouts and tables and insert equations and files and PDFs. They have an audio feature. So a lot more immersive than GoodNotes, but again, it comes with pros and cons as with any app. The one good thing about OneNote is that if you do have multiple devices, it will sync if you have if you are signed into the same OneDrive account. So if I were to sign into OneDrive on my computer, I'd be able to access the same file. So I just wanted to kind of show you the ropes of digital planning in OneNote. All right, so I'm gonna start with the February page. And one of the things that I love about OneNote is actually the very fun pen tools that they have. So it's very interesting that OneNote has kind of these like glittery nebula like Pencils, I haven't seen any like pen tools kind of like that in GoodNotes or any other app that I've used. Obviously you can go in through this color spectrum here and choose your own colors and stuff. But I just think that these little pen colors are so fun. Don't know how practical they are if you are actually taking notes and planning within OneNote, but I think they're fun nonetheless. So let's say that I want to use that for Valentine's Day or maybe I'll use like this glittery pink here. And you can select the draw feature using this. Obviously I'm using this on my iPad. OneNote might be set up differently on your computer, depending on which system you have. So I know on my Windows computer, I have the tabs across the top and down the sides. So I'm just going to zoom in here on the 14th and just write Valentine's Day in this like really cool glittery font, glittery pen color. I think that's really cool and fun and it kind of goes with the planner. Of course, you can go in here and then just edit the pen size, any of the colors that you want. They have the black and the gray options here. I really like using those three. So I can go in here and do something like Bill Do. 
It's essentially the exact same as if digital planning in GoodNotes or any other app, except it will sync across multiple systems. You can also go in and add in different shapes and arrows. I really like these graph tools here. It's very easy to just draw your own graph. This graph especially would have been super handy when I took calculus because it has three axes. You can also do the ink to shape feature where you just draw a shape and it auto perfects to it. They also have highlighter tools as you'd expect. So that's really fun. They have really bright and beautiful colors as a pre-select for these highlights. Let's try this purple one. Fun. I do wanna to go to this insert feature and just show you a bit of the inserts here. So now with this selected, you can actually insert a table. So this would be super handy if you wanted to add like a finances section to your planner where you can write down the day category transactions amounts. I think that would be super handy by using that table feature. You can obviously pull in pictures. So maybe if you have stickers that you wanna pull in from your camera roll or your photo library, they obviously have the camera feature. You can pull from online pictures. So this is integral to all Microsoft programs where you can just kind of search stock photos and images. And they also have this audio feature, which would be really handy, more so handy for note taking. They have this file option. So, so because this isn't necessarily just all one page, you can actually come out here and write outside of your planner page, annotate your planner, and you can also put a bunch of different files around your planner. So let's say you want everything associated with this monthly page. You can insert files below here for your months. They also have a PDF function, so you can insert an entire PDF. More so helpful for note taking if you wanna import kind of like your professor slides or something. Here's where you can add in links. You can also add in equations. You can add in the date and you can also add in any meeting details. You can come over here to the view function and you can actually hide your sections if you don't want that to come up. You can toggle on and off spelling autocorrect. You can change kind of the zoom of the page. You can also change the page width. You can change the page colors here if you decide that you want a different color page that this is on, as well as the page style as well. Another super handy feature of OneNote that's not necessarily available in any other apps is password protected pages. So if there's a certain part of your planner that you want to protect, you can just create a password for that page. So maybe you have a page of your passwords or finances page or anything that you don't want people to have easy access to, you can password protect those pages as well. You can come over here into the settings and if you download the file and you kind of see my initials everywhere where I've created these, because these I actually created within OneNote, so I went in and dated this whole planner. Yeah, so if you don't want this dated and you wanna use this year round, you can easily come in and change the numbers. Another thing that might be worth mentioning is that I did use a custom font that won't be available on your iPad or your computer if you were to download this file. If you want the same font, I'll be sure to link it down below. I really like this font duo and the creator behind the font. And so I use this font throughout the planner, but again, if you don't have it downloaded across your devices, you'll wanna make sure you do that before downloading the planner. If not, you can just come up here and select this. And then you can actually just go in up here and then change it to whatever font you want. It might come as a default font like Helvetica or something. So that's just something to keep in mind if your planner looks a little bit different than mine. But you can also come in here and change the numbers of those as well. One thing that's important with OneNote digital planners is that the sections are named whatever main text is on your page. So for instance, February 1st, this section is named February 1st because I typed February 1st for the date. But if you were to change this to something like 2021, it's going to change that tab. So I wanted to let you all know about that little feature that will happen. I also included some templates here in the back section of this planner. So I have a blank page, a dot grid page, a graph page, and a line page. So these pages would be super helpful if you needed to jot down any notes within your planner, or if you just wanted to use this kind of as a notebook or if you wanted to journal or something, you have these pages in here as well. You can also do a long press and delete any sections that you don't want. You, you can also move and copy these in different notebooks if you want to. I do have a financial overview section and this is where I made use of the tables within OneNote. 
So you can go in and edit these tables to fit kind of your needs for your financial situation. I also have a meal planning and preparation page. So again, I made use of the tables in OneNote. I also have a reading tracker where I use the tables. And then I have some templates that I hand drew in Procreate and then pulled into OneNote. And so this is one of my favorite weekly templates that I created. Here's a wellness weekly template, a vertical weekly, and then a workout schedule template. So I just included a few templates in the back for you to explore. I also included a blank sticker section in the very back if you want to pull in stickers that you already have or found for free on the internet. So one thing about Microsoft OneNote is that they have built-in stickers that you can create and pull in. I do believe it's only available on the desktop version because I'm able to access that on my desktop version of OneNote. But again, I haven't really explored the OneNote iPad app as much. There are a few limitations in the app versus the desktop version that I have. One thing that I did want to bring up that I really, really like about OneNote is that, for instance, let's say we're on this daily page, so January 14th. So here's a daily page. What I really like about it is that they actually have different tags for OneNote. So they have a checkbox, a star, and a question mark. So this will be super helpful for note taking. But I really like how you can go in and let's say, complete homework assignment. I can go in and move this wherever I want. And then as I'm on OneNote, whether it's on my computer or my iPad, and if I completed it, I can just check it. And I really, really like that. And then they also have kind of a star here. I believe on the desktop, you can actually change some of these icons and they also have a question mark. So that'd be super helpful for note taking and whatnot. They also have these tags here. So you can do important question to do, remember for later definition. So highlight contact address. They have these different tags where you can go in and tag whatever you decide to write or copy down in your planner. So for instance, if you have a password, you can write that down and type in like whatever your password is. That's probably what most of our passwords look like now. So that's just something really handy that I really like about OneNote. And I think especially the checkbox feature would be super helpful with digital planning and note taking, especially since I like to do a lot of task batching in my digital planners. So yeah, this I'm super excited about the OneNote Digital Planner. Again, it is a little finicky if you are on Apple devices because the desktop version of OneNote is very different from the Windows version of OneNote. So I do have a link in the description where I'm sharing a read-only version of this file. Whenever you access that link, I recommend accessing it on your computer. It's way easier to access and kind of sync to your own OneDrive account using that link. And then since it's a read-only file, you will want to long press on all of these main tabs here and select all of these like this. And then you're gonna wanna hit copy into a notebook you already have. So for instance, let's say I create a new notebook and I can say that this is going to be my 2021 planner for the year. You can actually come in here and change the colors if you want. So let's say that, hit done. It's going to create your notebook. And since the file linked below will be a read only file, again, you'll just wanna long press and select all of these sections. And it's also gonna copy all of the subsections within those tabs. And then you're gonna hit copy and then you're going to select whatever planner or notebook that you opened specifically to move these tabs into. And you can just copy those over into your second notebook that you opened. So I hope this video was helpful. I think it's really interesting, the capabilities of OneNote compared to other apps that I've tried. And I think the organization is likely more pleasing to a lot of people, especially knowing that they can access these files across different devices if you have a Surface tablet, but an Apple computer or an Apple computer and an iPad or a Windows computer and an iPad. I think OneNote is likely to be your best option as far as getting that syncing capability if that's something that you feel like you need for digital planning. I also recommend checking out the OneNote note-taking video that I've posted if you're interested in seeing how different or how similar OneNote can be if you want to use it strictly for note-taking. So I hope you enjoyed this video and again I'm super excited to offer this OneNote digital planner for you for free. Just by using the link in the description, you'll need to sign up for my newsletter and get access 
to the password to access this planner, but I hope you enjoy it. If you have any issues with it, feel free to comment down below. OneNote can be a little finicky, so I hope that you're able to access this and use it and find it to your benefit. So thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to like this video and subscribe if you enjoyed it, and I will see you next week with another video. Bye everyone!